Do you ever wish you could have a life do-over, similar to a makeover or a house renovation? A chance to try something again with a different result? Try Again with Monique is a place where I will give you my take and also hear from you regarding the questions and challenges we all face in life. You will either be inspired to try life again, over and over again, or make some really good lemonade from those sour lemons. Either way, I got you. If at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique. Today, I am speaking with Jillian Hainsworth, Buffalo, New York's first poet laureate who has written and performed many inspiring pieces as a social justice poet. Jillian is also an author of a book entitled For the Culture, and she donates her time and her energy to increasing literacy education by creating and stocking up outdoor library boxes in various locations around the city of Buffalo. I can't wait to hear what she has to say and offer us today about the service she provides to her community and how how you can serve your own community in meaningful ways. Jillian, welcome to the podcast and thank you for agreeing to talk to me today. How are you? I am doing well. Thank you for having me. I'm always, always happy to, to come on and talk and especially to you. I've known you since I was a little girl. Yes, girl, so I'm so very proud of you. This. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm so you. glad to have you on the podcast. Jillian, my intention for uh, the Try Again with Monique podcast is really to, you know, encourage people to think outside the box about their lives and to have the courage to, you know, do something different or try something new, especially if they don't like the current place they're in. Um, today's topic, as you know, is a life of service. And I, I define service as, you know, devoting your life or your career to helping others or enhancing their lives in some some kind of way. What I want to talk to you about is how you define service, how you're currently serving, and what you consider the benefits of service to be. And I want to start with your personal definition of service. Jillian, how do you define it? I define it very simple. Okay. It's using the tools that you have in your toolbox to benefit other people. Um, and to me, it's really that simple. I think sometimes we overcomplicate what service is. Um, a lot of times people feel like if they can't have this huge impact that it's not service. If they're not serving enough people, then it's not service. But it really is just using whatever you have, whatever is in your tool chest to help other people. So if you can cook and you cook dinner for one neighbor, that's service. And if you can if you can write and you do poetry to inspire the community, that service. Um, I don't think there are limits on what it is, but I think we all do it every single day. And a lot of times we don't realize. I think that is awesome. That is, I mean, it's simplistic, but it's really profound. Using the tools you have in your toolbox to help other people. That's awesome. That's an awesome definition that I think, as, as you stated, everybody uh, you know, can apply to their lives. Um, everybody has something to give. Everybody has something Correct. they can do to help somebody else. That's awesome. Tell us, Jillian, about your journey. I, I want to know more about how you got started serving people and serving communities, um, you know, the Buffalo, New York community and beyond. Yeah, so I, I went to Fredonia, SUNY Fredonia, and going from the east side of Buffalo to Fredonia was culture shock. It was the biggest culture shock I've ever experienced in my life. Yeah, um, yeah. Attending a predominantly white school, but growing up in a black neighborhood and going to a black, predominantly black school and a predominantly black church. Um, mm -hmm. It was a lot. And while I was at Fredonia, we saw the death of Trayvon Martin. Mm -hmm. um, we saw so many things happen in, in our country mm -hmm. that were really rooted in racism and white supremacy and the sometimes human refusal to be empathetic. <laughs> um, sure, sure. And I think experiencing those things at a predominantly white institution really opened my eyes to what it means to be unapologetically who I am. And it also opened my eyes to what it means to help people. Because when I was a kid, service to me was charity work. Okay. Now as an adult, I understand that it is really an, a duty. Mm. Um, we are not put here <laughs> to just look out for ourselves. If we were, there'd only be one person on earth at a time. Awesome. <laughs> and awesome. that's not how it works. Right. Um, 
So I, I went to college for criminal justice and law. I focused on uh, restorative justice and civil rights. Okay. And after coming home, I needed to find a job. Sure. <laughs> and that's how I was introduced to the field of social work. So as a social worker, I worked with kids as a uh, education specialist and as a mental health specialist and then eventually I worked with survivors of interpersonal violence starting with a local nonprofit organization and by the time I left that field I was um, working for the Department of Justice and it was my job to make sure that a specific college had policies and procedures to help survivors Okay. Um, And to make sure that they were in compliance. You know, we have a lot of different laws in New York State and federally, so make sure everybody was in compliance. Mm -hmm. And then George Floyd got killed. And I remember calling my supervisor and saying, like, my community is really, really pulling on me right now. I'm going to have to take a week or so off because it's a lot happening Mm -hmm. and I need to be here. And they were like, okay, well, you have the time, so do you. Um... And then a a position at an organization called Open Buffalo opened up as their director of leadership development. And I stepped into that and became a full-time community organizer. My main role was creating curriculum to teach people in the community how to be community organizers. So instead of doing the work, we're giving the blueprint. Um, Hmm. And now here I am. I'm I'm a full-time poet, but I've taken everything I've learned as a social worker and as an employee and as a community organizer. And I like to bake all of that into my identity as a poet. I was just going to say that. poetry is service. Yeah, I was going to say that. It sounds to me, now hearing your history, your your work history, how you, what led up to you being where you are currently, it just, it really sounds like all of that is really reflected in, in your pieces, in your work. Yeah, and I try to make sure that it reflects, I try to make sure that it's trauma-informed and that it's honest and that I'm not spending too much time praising resilience. Um, I think a lot of times as a society, we we applaud people's ability to be resilient, but we don't always look at why they have to be resilient. Mm, so okay. I, I try to be very intentional and careful about the words I use and um, the feelings I'm leaving my listeners with. Sure. Are they going to feel inspired? Are they going to feel convicted? Like, like what's the feeling and is it appropriate? And what, um, what's the intention? The what's the intention? Right. Yeah. That's really good. That's really good. Yeah. My understanding, Jillian, is your poetry is uh, permanently featured at corporations such as locally here, such as Tesla and uh, Topps Market. Uh, give us the backstory of how that came about. Yeah, so in top specifically after um, the the terrorist attack on May fourteenth, mm-hmm. um, the the CEO and the board at Tops they were working with the employees to figure out what the employees wanted the store to look like and feel like once it reopened. And the employees were like, "Oh, we need to do a tribute, and you have to call this poet. She's like our poet. We all love her. Call her." And poet of the people. Yeah, they poet me. of the people. Yeah. 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 And they called me and I was like, why are you calling me? <laughs> um, and it felt it felt big. It felt overwhelming. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know how to do this. Like, I don't know how to use my my tools for this purpose. Um, you know, scary, but but they gave me a very general theme of water and I went down to the foot of ferry and for any listener who doesn't know the foot of ferry is at the end of West Ferry and it is the last stop that um, black people would would make before trying to swim across to Canada. Um, So there Mm -hmm. is a lot of history with that body of water. So I went and I sat by the water and this poem just kind of came out of me and now it is permanently in tops. Um, I've seen it once. That is <laughs> I, awesome. I don't frequent tops. Mm-hmm. Um, and I understand that a lot of people don't. So I also have it on my website for people to read. And I carry these little buttons around with the last stanza of that poem. And I just hand them out when people 
and people want them so they can carry a little piece of that that message and with them I think without that, going into the store. Yeah, yeah, I think that is so awesome that uh, you were the person that they wanted to speak, uh, you know, for them. Um, in, in, in this, yeah. in this, you know, traumatic situation, um, that they trusted your voice enough to, to call on you to create something that would speak, you know, I said poet for the people, cause that's, that's what came to my mind that you would speak on behalf of the people, you know, so often Jillian people, uh, you know, say I have this gift or I have this talent or this skill. Um, and, and, you know, that's wonderful. You should recognize things within yourself, but I think it's really something when other people recognize the gifts and the skills and the talents you have as well. Uh, I, I think that is so wonderful that that is how that came about. I, I didn't realize that that you were called upon uh, by people yeah. to speak for them in, in a traumatic moment. So they clearly trusted that sensitivity you talked about earlier and, and, and you know, the consideration that you take when you speak you know, about a given issue. Yeah. Um, I think that's wonderful, that's great. Um, Jillian, tell us why you think service is important. And, and do you think that everybody, you kind of answered this earlier a little bit, but do you think everyone can serve in some capacity? Why is service important and can everyone serve? So service is important because it's the only way that we can survive as a people. Like service is sustainability. Okay. Um, we all don't know how to do everything. Mm -hmm. We're not designed that way. It is literally impossible. It would be too much. Your brain would never stop. <laughs> it's just not possible. Mm -hmm. But we all have gone through different things. And we all have different gifts. And we all have different access. Um, and I think service should be something that is just inherent to us. Okay. All the way down to... When a baby is born, right, <laughs> and mm -hmm. everybody comes in the hospital with gifts for the baby and food, that's that's providing a service to the mother. That's providing support. Mm. Like everything yeah. from the time yeah. that you are born until the time that you die and someone comes and speaks to give you your flowers at your memorial service, it's all service. There's, there's nothing in between that's not considered service to someone because I think it's also important to mention that service to yourself is just as important as service to other people. Okay. And that might look like making sure you get enough rest. Self-care, self-care. Sure. Yeah. Sure. That's, that's service. Mm -hmm. So I, I think we have to kind of move away from thinking of service as like these special acts Okay. and start to think of it as something that is inherent in us. And because of that, everyone is, a, is able to provide service and everyone is providing service. That is a wonderful uh, way of looking at it. That's a great perspective. I, I, I agree with you, Jillian. I think that, you know, everyone has a God given purpose, everyone, um, you know, an assignment, you know, that God put you on earth to complete and everybody's purpose is in some way going to involve serving others on some level. Uh, because God doesn't give you a purpose just for yourself. You know, it reaches beyond exactly. you. And so if you have a purpose, which everyone does, you know, uh, that means mm -hmm. that on some level, your purpose is connected to serving somebody. Uh, so I really, right. I believe a living a life of purpose is equivalent to living a life of service. They're, they're really synonymous. Exactly. You can't really have yeah. one without the other. And, and if you believe that to be true, which I do, then service is everybody's purpose, is everybody's mission. Mm -hmm. And I 100% I agree with that. Um, Jillian, and what would you say? Yeah, Go ahead. When, I was going to say, even when you when you were speaking about my the community trusting me, mm -hmm. like the community trusting me is how I've been learning to trust myself. OK, so when a community member says like, oh, we want you to speak because we trust you or we we think you can speak to this moment, they are providing a service for me because I am not this. I don't I don't like being in the spotlight. Okay. <laughs> Just as a person, I don't enjoy attention. Okay. So when even by the community trusting me, they are providing a service to me because they are giving me the confidence I need to keep doing what I'm doing because it's not something that is second nature to me. Wow. That is awesome. That is awesome. Jillian, what would you yeah. say to uh, someone listening 
who really, you know, maybe can't serve the way you do. Maybe they're inspired by your story, but they can't do it the way you do it. Um, but they do want to reach out. They want to extend themselves more, you know, to help someone. How can they start right where they are to serve? You spoke a little bit about this earlier, but can you just kind of uh, just give people some, some takeaways? How can they start right where they are, wherever they are, to serve somebody else? Yeah, it's very easy. Start at home. Okay. Like... Help your the person who lives with you or help the person who lives on your street. Like there are people who need help all around us. And that's good. Yeah. It it really starts there. Like I, I wouldn't be useful in the community if I didn't know how to help my mother. You know? Good. Like good, good start good. where you are and don't try to grab reach for straws. Mm-hmm. Because again, it's all right in front of you. So I'd say start at home and, and build. You know, as you build your network. You will meet more people. You'll there are organizations that are constantly looking for volunteers. Um, there are so many different ways that you can be of service, but it really does have to start at home. That's good. That's good. What advice, Jillian, would you give to someone who wants to do exactly what you're doing? Uh, what do they need to know? What do they need to do to you know walk in, walk in your shoes, so to speak? Um, patience is a virtue. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people who um, who are just now kind of noticing me and my work, they don't always understand that everything that I've gone through from the time I was a child to now has made me who I am now. Mm-hmm. Um, and that I'm 30. I just turned 30. So that means that for me to be the Jillian that you are speaking to on November 8th, 2022, there is 30 years of backstory. Wow, that's good. <laughs> um, that's good. So you have to be okay letting the story play out a little bit. Mm-hmm. You have to do the work. You have to be consistent. I think a lot of times when people are not successful in the arts specifically, it's not because they aren't talented, mm-hmm. but you cannot lack follow through and do this. That's good. Um, so you have to do the work. You have to be consistent. If you can't be consistent with what you want to do, we don't even have to talk about you being consistent to the community because you don't know how. (laughs) (laughs) We got to start again. It starts at home. So be consistent. Be patient. Keep writing. Never stop. Okay. Um, And and be okay with the fact that sometimes some of the, the stuff that comes out of you that you might be a little apprehensive about sharing, some of that stuff is coming from God. Like... Mm. When you are signing up for this, you are a messenger now. So there are going to be times where you have to kind of get out of the way okay. and get out of your comfort zone in order to provide the service. Wonderful. Wonderful answer. Great takeaways for people who are looking at you and, and, and you know, I don't know what perspective they might be looking at you, you know, with from. Um, they might think, oh, that I can do that. That's not that hard to do. Mm-hmm. Or they just might want to know what they can do. I, I love that you said, you know, I'm loosely paraphrasing, of course, but you can't just have an idea or or passion or, or, you know, an idea of what you want to do. You have to follow up, you know, with that idea and do the work. Um, And as you were talking, I was thinking that, you know, the journey is just as important as the destination. Sometimes we just look at the destination and we don't appreciate or really grow in the journey you know, that gets us to the destination, that process. Like you said, there were years in the making before you, happy belated birthday, by the way, (laughs) before you became (laughs) recently 30. (laughs) Um, And and for you to be a trusted voice in a given community, um, you know, it's because you show up and they they know you show up prepared. They know you show up having done the work. uh, And they've seen that enough to be able to trust you. People don't trust anybody to speak on their behalf or to speak to their issues. That is not, I don't think, an easy thing, uh, uh, you know, for people to to trust you to do. And so when they when they trust you to do that, that means they've seen enough of your work. They've seen enough of your ethic. Uh, they know, you know, the consideration you're going to put into it. And they know you're going to show up prepared and ready uh, to, to be sensitive uh, in that moment and speak from your heart and what God has given you. And, and, and I think that's commendable. Uh, but th- those are great takeaways for people that, you know, you cannot just have an idea. You have to do the work and you have to appreciate the journey and not just look at, you know, the destination because people don't just, you know, get to where they are overnight. 
Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, that's great. That's great. Um, Jillian, tell us a little bit how you, you've alluded to this uh, already, though. How has living a life of service enriched your life? Just how, what has it personally done for you? Yeah, so for me, um, it's made me um, more aware mm-hmm. of, of what's happening around me, mm-hmm. um, more empathetic to other people's struggles and the things that other people have to deal with. Um, under I understand nuance okay. a little bit better. Okay. Help me understand that the world is not black and white. Um, mm. There's a lot of gray everywhere. Um, and it just made me happier. You know, really? I, I am a person who, who really does enjoy helping other people. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm also a person who enjoys results. <laughs> like it's not always the act of helping. Sometimes it's helping someone get from point A to point B. Um, even if it's point A is the grocery store and point B is their car. And I'm just kind of helping them, helping someone get their, their grocery cart because they have a lot of kids sure. or something like that. Like I like the outcome. I'm a results girl. <laughs> um, so it, it makes me feel like I have quantitative things that I can say, I, I did this. I helped this person. You're accomplishing um, something. Yeah. 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 And again, I, I think it's inherent. So I think without it, I probably just would not feel as complete when it comes to the work and in my life in general. So awesome. Awesome yeah. answer. Tell us, you know, how you think the service that you provide has enhanced the lives of the people in the communities you serve. You know, what have you observed? What have, feedback have you gotten? So I'm not always good at giving myself my flowers. Okay. So I, I definitely hope that it's impacting the community. I think the fact that the community has, has made me the first poet laureate. Absolutely. And they, Absolutely. they keep me employed and I'm a full-time artist now is, is a result um, Commendable. But I, I yes. think about this um, performance I had back in November of 2018. It was my birthday and I did a, a show and it was after my first book for the culture came out. I was so excited and so nervous, but I invited so many people at the time I was working um, in integrated domestic violence court and some of my coworkers came to to my show and some of them brought their families their spouses and I was so excited. I remember one of my coworkers brought her husband and he already didn't look happy because he probably did not want to spend his Friday night at a poetry show. Okay. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Okay. But I just remember where he sat in the, in the room that I was performing in. He was the only person I could see because of the lighting. Okay. And the entire time through the first half of my, my set, he sat with his arms crossed and he was pouting. I'm just like, what is wrong with this guy? Oh my goodness. Like, I'm up here pouring my heart out. The wine only costs $2. Like, cheer up, you know? Um, and he just sat there kind of scowling. Hmm. And I remember doing my poem, and this is kind of the poem that put me on the map in Buffalo as a poet. It's called Little Black Boy. Yes. I remember that. And I did that piece. And the overall gist of that piece is when black and brown people are being gunned down by the police, you have to tell me they did something wrong, something that was life threatening and imminent in order for that to be the resort. Um, I remember doing that piece. And after that piece, we went into like a small intermission. He came up to me and he had tears in his eyes. Wow. And I'm just thinking what is wrong with this man? Like I already was not feeling his attitude. <laughs> he was sitting there pouting the whole time and he cried. And he was just like, I never knew. Like I never even thought hmm. to look at this from the perspective of somebody who looks like you and not like me. And this was an older white man. Wow. Um, wow. That is the impact that I want to have. Uh- and everything that I do, the goal is anti-racism. It's building the community mm-hmm. and doing the work to eradicate racism. And that is what I hope, if I don't do anything else, that's what I hope I did for at least one person. Absolutely, (laughs) absolutely. um, That conversation with that gentleman after my performance really made me feel like I did tear down a barrier between his understanding of Blackness and the actual lived experience of Black people. 
So incredible. So that's the goal. And that's what I hope I'm doing with my service. That's what I hope the outcome is. Incredible. Um, sustainable change. Sure. Um, sure. And getting people to think outside of themselves and their experience and their world and their neighborhood and mm -hmm. their culture uh, and, and, and seeing, you know, view uh, the lives of how, how somebody else is living, you know, because you, right. you can. Or to look at it and decide this is not normal. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. We don't have to normalize this, but it really starts with just opening our eyes. Awesome. Awesome. Where can listeners find you, Jillian, if they want to get in touch with you? Where can they find you online or, or anywhere else? Yep. So on Facebook, I'm poet Jillian Hainsworth. On Instagram, I'm poet underscore Jillian underscore Hainsworth. Or you can go to my rep website. It is www.jillthepoet.com. Great. Wonderful. Wonderful. I want to, um, I'm going to uh, just kind of, you know, wrap it up now and I'm going to ask you a few fun questions. So uh, okay. <laughs> these are light, uh, just so people can, uh, I, I think you've allowed us to to, to get to know your heart of service, but I want them to get to know you personally just a little bit. So a um, okay. couple of questions for you uh, in, in conclusion. Mm -hmm. How would, what is something, Jillian, that you like or dislike that most people wouldn't know about you? Something you like or dislike that most people wouldn't know about you? Would know? They would not know. Oh, would not yeah. know? What do I like or dislike that most people would not know? I like... Um, Ratchet reality TV. Okay. <laughs> I can just get lost in it. <laughs> um, it's another world, And I don't right? like... <laughs> it is. And it's like, at least this is not my world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, this is very specific, but I don't like... You know when you go to the store, right? Uh -huh. And you pay with cash, and they give you your money back? Yeah. And they put the change on top of the cash? Oh, you don't like that? That right there is one of my biggest pet peeves, like... Put the change in my hand first and then the cash. So now I don't have to juggle oh, change I get sliding it. off of the... Yeah, I get like, it. I, oh, I, I have had that happen me. to me. And now that I, I think about it, you're right. Because at least for me, I'll try to like, you know, I'm trying to put the dollar bills away. And, but you put the change there. So it makes it a little more complicated for me to put everything oh, away. Put the change in their hand first. <laughs> And then yeah. they can actually close their hands and take the I can relate to that. I've That's had that happen code. before. Okay, <laughs> I, I, I'm with you on that one. How would you, Jillian, describe yourself in one word? One word. Ooh, okay, one word to describe me. I am... Intentional. Intentional. I think that's a good word to describe. It. Intentional. Yeah, yeah. There's always a method to my madness, regardless of what I'm doing. I'm very intentional. I love that. I love that. Jillian, thank <laughs> you so much. I want to end uh, with a snippet of one of your original pieces you recited in a video, I, I believe, about Buffalo, sponsored by the Buffalo Bills. And it is, we choose healing around here. We eat storms like buffalo wings. We'll jump through hoops and jump through tables. It's a buffalo thing. I love that, Jillian. I love what you're doing in and for the Buffalo, New York community and beyond. You know, Jillian, one of my favorite quotes by Martin Luther King is life's most urgent question is what are you doing for others? And by sharing your story, Jillian, and giving us direction on, on how we can all live a life of service, you have answered his question and you're continuing to answer it by example and through your service. I love that you didn't stop at what you have accomplished in your own life, your personal battles that you had to overcome and the lane that you've carved out for yourself. Because plenty of people, uh, you could have just told your story of what you overcame and had to go through and conquer. Plenty of people, young and old alike, would have been inspired, I believe, by your story alone. But you've gone a step further by using your platform to help somebody else. That is what in my opinion, service is all about. And it's the epitome of each one reach one. So Jillian, I, I want you to know I'm proud of you. I, I want you to continue to soar and continue to inspire people to think about the issues of the day and to have the courage to right the wrongs. Thank you, Jillian, for sharing your journey with us and for teaching us the importance of service and how a life of service can benefit us personally, as well as the people and the places we serve. Thank you for taking the time to listen to Try Again with Monique. If you enjoyed today's episode, please take a moment to leave a review wherever you are listening. Please also remember to hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when new episodes are available. New episodes will be posted weekly. Please also like and follow us on Facebook. 
Try Again with Monique is a production of GM Associates, released under Creative Common Attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 4.0 international license. Remember, if at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique.